we are engaging this content for the same group of students, you know, and, and it's good. So Irama's question was the center. I think it has something to do with uh, Otega's connection or symbolism of man's being as equal to what he, he will call an ontological center. Okay, a center. Who is a center? If you watch adventure movies, you see these beings that have part of them being human, and then sometimes they are waist level to, to the leg being that of an animal. So maybe a cattle, you know. So when you look at the face of the being from the head or the bust area to the waist is a human being, but then the lower part of that being is, is an animal. If you just Googled center, you would, you would see that. And so Otega uses that symbolism to show the point he's making. He's trying to make a point. And so he uses that to show that the being of man, he doesn't want to say nature of man because then it is nature, then it has to be fixed and unchanging and must have been given prior to man's existence, which is what he's contending. He's arguing against that view that you can't call that the nature of man. So he doesn't use nature because he critiques any definition of man, human being, okay, that restricts man's being to what? A fixed, unchanging reality. He thinks that that is not true or that is not defensible. So that is the point he is making. He's making a case against the so called claim that man has a nature. Okay, I'm sharing my slides now. And so to show us what he thinks man's being is, he says, look, man is not like the stone on the field. If you play the lecture video, you would see, you would see uh, what I've said. He says, man is not like a stone in the field, a thing, which has no contribution to make when it comes to its being. The stone can contribute anything to what it is. In fact, it is already what it is. What it is potentially, and when it and what it is, uh, you know, um, actually are the same. That a thing's potential, potentially, what it it can be and what it is are the same. There is no difference between the stone's potential capacity and what it is already. But Otega says human beings are not like that. Man doesn't have a fixed and changing, look on my screen now, please, if you can, preordained essence that was given prior to his or her existence. But Tega doesn't think so. And so to show you the point he is making, he uses two scenarios, the boat with part of its keel inside water and the other part on the, on the land. The keel is the, I mean, the side of the boat that, that curls over, okay? So half of it, inside water and the other half on the land. He's using that to symbolize the nature of man, which he wouldn't call nature. He would say the being of man, the being, okay? He also goes further to use the center. So that is what I think is Irama. Irama's question is centering on. He says man has a part of him or her that is natural, is given, just like the stones, Nature. A stone will have nature, according to Otega, because a stone will have that which is fixed and unchanging, an essence in it. Okay, but human beings, he doesn't think, have nature in this sense of the word nature. He thinks that human beings have part of them being natural. So your mother, your father, your biological parents are given. You don't choose them. You are born by them. You find yourself having them. It's fixed. I'm talking about biological parent. I'm not talking about foster parent or someone you look up to. That one you can choose. But I'm talking about the one who gave birth to you. You didn't choose your mother. You didn't choose the continent you should be born in. When you grow up and you are able to, you can decide that I, I want to naturalize you or there. You see that. But you didn't choose it. It is given. I want to put flesh to what Otega is saying to help you understand it. Okay. So 
there is a part of you, says Ochega, that is given, fixed, which you have no contribution towards. You are a human being, you eat. The capacity to eat is given to you. The stone doesn't eat. The stone doesn't get tired. Because you eat, if you are not careful, you might steal to eat if you are hungry. The stone doesn't have to be arrested for stealing because he doesn't have in his makeup the capacity, if you like, the, the desire to eat, the desire to have an affair with a woman or a man. The stone doesn't have that. So the stone may not have to go and rape and be accountable. I'm showing you the connection, but human beings, says Ojega, have a part of them that is given. You necessarily eat. Naturally, you have that part. So man has a natural part. You saw it if you looked at the slides at all and you listened to the, the lecture delivered and you engage the PDF. All those options given to you so that you don't have an excuse not to do well. You see, but people will still choose. And Utega says we should respect your choices because you are creating an essence for yourself. So if you choose otherwise, we'll give you what you wanted. I, I would just advise that you choose wisely. Okay, so on the screen, I, I forwarded to Utega's a view of man's being. Take note, man's being. If you say man's nature, you will have issues with Utega because of what nature means. Remember our discussion of Plato last week in person, the allegory of the cave, okay? We talked about the essence of things. And for, for Plato, things have a nature, including human beings. They have an essence, things have a form, things have a being with a capital B, that which makes it what it is, without which the thing ceases to be what it is. That is the being of a thing. So for, for Plato, Human beings, if you like, are defined essentially by their souls or spirit or reason, the non-physical part, whichever label you want to give it, okay? That is why if we lose that essential part of us, that when the separation of, say, the soul from the body or the non-physical from the body, then we say that the, this body is useless. That's why we throw the body away, we burn it or we dig somewhere and put them there, no matter how all the intricacies around the ceremony. We, we throw it away, really, if you want to be blunt, because the body is container. The essence has left. That language of essence, that language of nature, fixed, unchanging reality, form, being, that is given to man prior to existence, is a Plato's language. Plato and others like you and I, who believe that their things have essence. So the essence of a table is what? What is the essence of a car? We gave all those nice examples last week. Okay, now Otega will say, well, if you talk about the essence or the nature, now I use the language nature, okay? If you talk about the nature or essence of um, tables, chairs, stone, what have you, I have no problem, says Otega. And it's existentialist friends. So I move up some few steps up. My problem though, you see, this is Ortega and his friends. Where are they? I put their names up there. Yeah. But Ortega says, if you said that for things, then there's no problem. Things are giving their existence. So the starting point of the PDF which I think, I suspect, some of you may not have even seen it. It's still at your resource, too, okay? It says, a stone is given its existence. That's the starting point of the Otega paper I gave you, man has known it. She says, a stone is given its existence. We are engaging in a metaphysical question. That's how it starts. It doesn't have to fight to earn its being, whether economically or metaphysically. These are all from Otega, describing the stone. And so he says, so for, for such a stone, a thing, a table, a chair, your pen, people get angry and they beat their pen for it. Or they, they will be hitting the, the TV and throwing tantrums. TVs don't decide anything. <laughs> they are giving their existence. You can, you can smash your phone. It's up to you. Because you, you didn't hear good news. You, you, you lost the bet. So you threw your phone at them. Well, what has the phone done? It just communicated what it, it, it doesn't play any role in its being. So the phone, the stone, the table is a thing. 
And that is what Otega is saying. So as for a thing, it is giving a fixed and changing reality, what it is. It can be other than what it is, a stone in the field. But he says, don't think of the human person in that same regard. He says, that would be problematic. Human beings are not like that. So then he will say, human beings don't have a nature. That's where he's coming from. Not nature in whatever terms you have it, but they don't have anything that is fixed and unchanging about them. And his argument is because human beings have a certain being, a being that is partly natural and partly extra natural. And his contention is that the natural part of human beings are realized by themselves. You, it, it happens by itself. You just found yourself having the parents you have, good or bad. You found yourself living in the continent that you are in, good or bad. You can't change that. Essentially speaking, you, you can't change it. You can decide to make some choices, but that is already part of your package. So the past is given. But the essential point, for which reason he says, you may have a natural part, but it doesn't define you, see, you take that, is this. He says that natural part, which you share in common with the stone, the stone also has a natural part. He says that one doesn't contribute to your being because you can make choices. There I go. You can make choices that will help you in a being for yourself. You see? But you are not like the stone. If the stone changes to become sand or something else, it's because some, some entity, some other entity did it to it. Either I took a another big stone and hit it, or I crashed it with my shoe or something. The stone itself cannot contribute to its being, cannot change its being. But he says human beings, you and I, man, can make choices that will change us from one thing to the other. So today, Irabna is a student, Irabna is a student. The next time, Irabna is a, a, a medical doctor. The next time, by the choices she's making, Irabna is a United Nations Secretary General. The next time, Irabna is. So you cannot put a fixed definition to who Nancy is. This is the point he's making. And if you are reading him well, with, you may have all the critiques against him, and we raised some in our slide. But if you are reading him well, you see the heartbeat of the writer. Then you can see where you can agree with the author, where you would disagree. Some of the fundamentals may, may be different. Religious folks may have challenges with the self-centered, the I, 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 I. So you qualify it if you're a religious person, you say, by the help of God. And that is all. But the trust of the matter is, I think the potency is, think of the human person as having the ability to make a change. So instead of sitting down and crying over spilt milk, that if it weren't for grand, uh, uncle who took my father's property after my father passed on, for example, okay, now I'm showing the practical connections so you can make meaning of it for everyday life. See, if it weren't for my uncle who took my father's property, I don't know where uh, I would have been a better person than this. Well, he has taken the properties. He has. What are you doing? Do something. Because if you are sitting down thinking about the property, he has taken them. So maybe you want to start selling some bread or something. You do it. You want to start, you know, make choices, positive choices, of course, because Tega tells us, as we move from one step to the other, we will create a new being for ourselves. Based on those choices we make, it will open other alternatives to us. Then we'll make choices in that order. So we move from stage to stage, and we create our beings. You see, the we, we, I, I, human, human, is what, if you are very religious, you may not like. Yes, we can, by ourselves, stop, stop like that. But if you just qualify the and say, by the help of God, you will see the wisdom, I think, in what the gentleman is communicating. All right, thank you, Rab, no, say Rama, okay. Which other question, if there is any, quickly? Someone input. Uh -huh. Very good. I see Erica Osman. Erica, go ahead with your question, please. Good morning. Good morning, Madam. 
is is a wizard. So the the natural part of us is talking about is it the same as our history that is fixed? Okay. So all of it are included. When he says your history, it will be what is in your past. Um, and past, the uh -huh. so it, yes, so it in, I'll, I'll, I'll let you out. So it includes everything. I just want to put flesh to it to help you. Everything that has happened to you. So maybe the, the person experienced a broken heart relationship, for example. See, or God forbid, the lady was raped some years back. You can't unrape yourself, you see. If, if it happened as unpleasant as it is, you can't undo it. The thing has happened. But what you can do is to continue, make choices that will improve, change the status quo. The person ha has been divergenized, you see. I use examples that at level 100 and fresh students, you know, exuberant youth, you can, can associate with easy. You, 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 your virginity has been taken either willingly or willingly, for example. You can't become, you can't, what's the expression, unvirginize yourself, we'll say. I mean, if you're, you are no longer a virgin, you are no longer a virgin, you see. But what you can do is, okay, so this is what has happened. Now that has gone into my past. It has become a baggage I am carrying. Those who have read the PDF, you saw, he, he, he thinks of man as a pilgrim, an emigrant who is on a pilgrim car car carrying his baggage at his back. You always come with a baggage. Jesus was labeled the carpenter's son. But is he still the carpenter's son? I asked the class last Tuesday. Is he still the carpenter's son? No. <laughs> you, or you pray, don't pray in the name of the carpenter's son. Don't say I rebuke you in the name of the carpenter's son. But it is in his history, it is in his package. So the history bit includes what is given. In other words, what you didn't contribute to. And Otega says that one, there isn't anything you can do about it. That's God forbid you were born by a rich woman or a poor woman, a prostitute or a holy person, whatever that means. See, doesn't have to be your beggar. It is part of your package, your past, yes. But you can still, his emphasis is you, a human being, man, are still able to make choices to change that status quo, either positively or negatively. And that is where he thinks man is different from what uh, the goat, or maybe goat cry is not a, from the stone. Okay, my sister, what's the second part? Okay. Um, so he said the choices are free. He said we have endless opportunities and then choices are free for us. Then why yes. do we have to why do we have to choose it again if they I don't know how oh, to yes. okay so the yeah. choices means that when you went to the party at the buffet there is jollof rice there is banku there is fufu so those are the options various possibilities available to you you see that but the fact that the 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 options are available doesn't mean the food will enter your mouth you will have to choose so Suppose you found yourself as a homeless, that example at the end of the slides I sent you. Suppose you found yourself as a homeless orphan. You see that someone can be an orphan, but not homeless. Or someone who can be homeless now, but not an orphan. Maybe he's homeless because the parents are somewhere in the north or something. That's why it looks like that. But this one, homeless and orphan. Raped, I like those ones, eh? raped by a mentally sick, very sick person, not sick. Mentally derailed, you know, person, a cop, a tip, who who is not even stable. This is working. So homeless, orphan, raped, and impregnated by look at the stigma. Someone who has been mentally sick for over 23 years, walking the streets, you know. And so the foster home this person is in has rejected her because they didn't even know that it was raped. They, they just found that she, because she doesn't know she was pregnant. But they find out that you are pregnant three months. When we are begging for food to take care of you people, you two are going to carry pregnancy. Okay, so they ask her out. Now the, the girl is sitting there and all the options she see is what? She's contemplating suicide. This is one of my past questions, I think 2020. What will you, how would this philosophy 
of Ortega that we are discussing be relevant? What would be the value of such a philosophy to this child? Okay. Now to answer you directly, the person would think that all the options available is a suicide. And we, we hear suicide that people with suicidal tendencies because sometimes when they look around, they see a limited, very limited option. Sometimes you don't even see any other option than that one. So the person walks to the edge of a building, God forbid that for any one of you, it is never an option, I'm telling you. Okay, they walk to the edge of a building, a high rise building, and drop themselves down. Do you know what is ahead after that, that one? If you die, do you know what is ahead? So sometimes it is how we are diagnosing. And so Tega says, no matter what, no matter what the situation is, a human being has options. It is the stone that cannot say anything. It is the chair at the lecture hall that cannot say anything. From 7.30 now to maybe 7.30 in the evening, different people with different weights, you know, the different temperatures on their bodies will go and sit on those chairs. The chair has no say. Doesn't have any other option. Some will even drag the chair and throw it somewhere and pull another one, break the leg. Have you seen a chair taking any human being to court <laughs> for, for breaking their leg? No, because it is a chair. This is the trust of Otega's people. But he said, as for human beings, we always have options. So the sister that is saying, hmm, it's because I don't have anyone to help me. That's why I'm managing with this man a little. He's somebody's husband. Can you just go and look for some bread or something? I keep saying bread because I, this morning I want bread to eat. <laughs> Get something doing. Perhaps you have to manage how you are spending. Then you don't need so much. It is an option. Perhaps you have to hold school for two years and sell a little. Perhaps you have to change the, the, the incessant need for a certain kind of hostel. Why do you want to live in a, host, in a hostel that costs so much? When your salary or your allowance that your mommy can afford is 300 cities a week. Why do you want to go and live in a hostel? There? So maybe you may have to just readjust and say, look, I'll do non-resident. The only thing is I'll be very prompt. So when everybody's asleep, I'm up because I want to beat the traffic. It's an option. Some of us speaking to you were non-resident for years. All our undergraduate period were non -re. I was a Legon who assigned, uh, uh, affiliated to Legon. I never got a, a, a you go then, non-resident for years. Masters, non-resident. But I'm your lecturer. Now, a good one at that, <laughs> you see? So sometimes it is the way the person is diagnosing the problem that he or she feels there is no option than this. That is why I'm stealing. I want to do it because I, there's no, there no option. Look around, there are options. So that is what Otega says that man is always faced with what various possibilities, plenty of them. The only thing is the weightier matter is determining what you want to be so that it can influence the choices you are making so you can reach that end. That is weighty. It's difficult to do. And that's where if you're a church folk or religious, you say, so God will lead me. But God leading you doesn't mean you will learn. I know who I am. I know that my God lives. It. I am the head, not the tail. But you are getting F in chains. Let God be true. Let him be true. You have to let him be true. Otherwise, you will let God be false. So you have to do things, make choices that will actualize what God has said about you, even for the religious folk. Otherwise, God's word will look like it's, it's, it's not true. And we know we can all bear. You can't say you want a child, for example. Eh? And then all you are doing is praying. When the man is waiting for your married husband that you are living with, is waiting for you to make babies. We make babies in a certain way, if not by the ATM. Don't go and punch, pa, 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 and then baby will drop from ATM machine. No. So you do the prayer, yes, but let God be true. You have to get busy at that time of the month, okay, to get the child. Charity, let's get your question. So there are various opportunities that Erica uh, Otega is referencing is that your ability to diagnose. I mean, <laughs> Ghana says we are hungry now. That's what we see, SHS. We are having food shortage. Ghana, where coconut can grow in a bathroom, coconut. Where cement, cemented ground, paved grass, you still see grass growing through the cement. 
a fatal land, land like this. Ghana is hungry. Everybody wants to go and join Unemployed Students Association. Graduate. Recently, we all saw the news. One of our students holding his placard and saying, now look, <laughs> please give me job to do because I finished my national service four years ago. I did so and so and so course. Uh, marine science, I, I think that's what I saw. Very, very depressing. If you are a mother, if you're taking care of your child, four years in school. Madam. After those four years, the child, yes, please, my lady. I'll take your question. After those four years, the student has done the national service and is now having four years after, no, no way. My lady, take my, <laughs> what will you do? The child doesn't see options. Otega says, you should be careful not to behave like the stone. It is the stone that has no options. So maybe we have a tailor-made thinking that is preventing us from seeing the options. That's the point I'm making. And I'm stressing it over and over and over again. That regardless of the situation, if it, you are a human being, man, Otega says there are options. And when we say there are options, it doesn't mean any option is an option. Look through them, you will see. You may just have to adjust. You may just, we may just have to start having an orientation as a nation that is just planting food everywhere. No contribution, no job. You see, everybody's planting. So from Kasua all the way to Cape Coast, those stretch of lands there, you see corn, you see tomatoes, see plantain, that's the norm. If we had that orientation, we will have food. Even if we don't have SUVs to drive, we'll have food. Ghana will not be hungry. That's the point I'm making. So the opportunity that looks like it's not there. And I'm going to churn out 1,500 of you for this year. By the next four years, by the grace of God, you will finish school in the next three years, really, because you are ending your first year. You are all going out. You all go and join the queue of those who are looking for jobs. Whose job are you going to do? Otega says, there are opportunities. Man must see them and make choices that will cause him to change the status quo and not sit like the stone. All right. Let me take my lady. I called you earlier. Please go ahead, Charity. Then afterwards, I can take Elizabeth and Hickman. Then we can go through our slides okay. unless there are questions. Go ahead, Charity. Okay, madam. So um, I, since, this is uh, Hikma. Have... This is Hikma speaking. I, I wanted Charity. Charity's hand went up first. Charity. Madam, it, this is Charity. Yes. Oh, okay, go ahead, Charity. Thank um, you. Please. So please, with the choices, do we say that um, one can be making good choices? And, and then later on, later on, because of a particular choice, the person will make um, at a different time uh, may bring the person back. Definitely. Maybe you've reached, you've gotten to a level, maybe a higher level, but because yeah. of one particular choice, decision you made will bring you back to yes. maybe square yes. one or something. Yes, my lady, yes. So you could, you could be a lecturer today if you go and take bribe or you go and give an A student an F because you took some money from somewhere, you know, let me use myself now. Then before long, you will, you will not be a lecturer. You may be a convicted criminal. And then the criminal could also make good choices at the prison there. And before you know it, the person is a preacher. And before long, the preacher could make choices and so he can alternate. That's what he calls the dialectics. You see it in his text, but we are not doing existentialism proper, so I don't want to stress you too much. I'll just walk you through the, the, the main lines for your level. Okay, so the answer is yes. The choices can either take you up or down. I mean, people choose yesterday or two days ago, so we saw the news. Human heads found in people's wherever. I mean, it's choices. <laughs> then some weeks passed, so we saw a man that apparently, allegedly, eh? Had, had gone to sacrifice his one of his children. He's making choices, he feels. Perhaps he wants the betterment of his, what is betterment? Okay, so yes, that's that's the response to your question, Hickman. Thank right. you. Thank you, my lady. Let me take um, 
It's good. I think you have read. Well done, class. So we, we keep going that way. Then we will just walk through the slides and make sure we fill the whole. Elizabeth. Elizabeth Dakwa, I think. Dakwa, answer. Go ahead. Okay, so please, Madam, I can yes. Are you what you do or what you have to do? Please come again. I, I didn't hear you clearly. My question is, are we what you do or what you have done? Man, we, are, man, what you have? we are a combination of everything that has happened to us and what we have done. This is detail, detail for me. I'm trying to pull out the text also so that I can project both alongside. We do some of the slides, then we look at his PDF itself, the, doc the document, okay? He says this explicitly in the text. We are a combination of what has happened to us and what we have done for ourselves. It's a blend. But always the driving force is what you do. So someone could have broken your heart, but you choose to be better about it, or you choose to move on. It's a choice you make, not a person. You could, you see, you could get up in the morning, so happy to get along, and then some, some driver can cross you in a way that may make you so angry. If you don't control yourself, your whole day will be. Will be. It is you, Otega says, ultimately, you choose whether you allow what happened to you, you see, <laughs> to affect you or not. It is a choice you make. So the person is slapping you, but you choose to react or not to react. That's why that part is the definite, the driving force, the one that is defining your being as you choose. So the project, what he calls man's being, the extra natural part, is not some non-physical part of you, like Plato would say. She's not a soul or uh, what's the thing, the spirit. No, no, no. He says all those are witchcraft and wizardry. He's focusing on the project of life. So you are a novelist. You are writing your own life story. And so the, act, the actual things that you do and are done to you, that you use. For some people, eh, if it wasn't because she, she had to be a house girl for a while, she wouldn't have known how to cook. Because of life situation, she became a house girl in a very posh home. And so there she had to learn how to do the dishes, how to do some salads, some whatever. And that has now made her a so-and-so restaurant. Then from there, she's a the manager of that. Now, she, because she can manage a good restaurant, she's opening lots and lots of shop, shops. And now she's becoming an entrepreneur, you see? So it is what you make of it. And that is why Ortega says you cannot ever know what man can be. You can't. <laughs> it is the book that maybe the person doesn't know. The person may not know how to add two plus three and square root of this and calculus. But maybe the person is a skillful footballer. And that can take him places. We know our fine you know, artists that do rap and what have you. Some of them are not book people. You too, you are learning book because you know that perhaps that is the channel that can take you to your next stage. And then when you apply something else, you move also to another stage. Then when you apply again, you move. So you are making choices and it is never static. That's why you have gone book line. Others, they just do some rap lines and they are living in Chazako. And where are you living? So if we think that man has a fixed line trajectory, it's a problem for you to think that way. Human beings are not fixed and unchanging, says Ortega. Okay, I hope that helps. Uh, uh, let me take Joseph Aperi now. Then afterwards, we'll come to Rita Brew. Mm -hmm. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, sir. Um, Please, I heard um, history is part of man's nature by Ortega. Yes. Um, Madam, if so, then our history is as a result of our present decisions. Right? Your history would be, would include those that you did. I'm, I'm trying to, Madam, I'm trying to say that whatever was done in the past, it's as a, yes. maybe, for example, if you make a yes. decision today, 
Yes. Then tomorrow, what you plan today becomes a history, right? Yes, yes. So history is that's why he use the he refers to res gestae, the ongoing history. So as soon as you do it, it becomes your past. You can't undo it. it becomes, uh, and yes. that becomes a part of you. That's yes, yes, sir. Then, he won't call it nature, then, though. He'll call it a part of your being because of the way we, of, we use the word nature. Yes. Then it means um, um, existentiality is um, that's, that's essentiality is as a result of our existentiality. No, please. Existentialism is bigger than that. We will go into it, but is that that approach of doing philosophy that focuses on human existence? Philosophy as it applies to human existence, actuality, not speculative philosophy. You know, we, we learn that, or not analytic philosophy. So existentialism itself is a if you like a school of philosophy, you, you, can, you can do that later in the course. It's, a, it's an elective in the department. Okay. It's bigger. We just use three of them, Jean Fossard, Heidegger, and then Otega. We focused on Otega's paper to bring out that existentialist view. It was. OK, doctor. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Well, so I just wanted to make one more comment on the history bit, and then I'll take the next the person I asked to speak. I was saying that when we say history for, for Otega, man's history includes the, the natural part of man, which he didn't contribute to, she, plus the, his or her past, which he contributed to. So if says that the sister is growing up, my lady's apologies, but if you were you at that time you were growing, were very slim and cute, you know, and all that. And so you were just Shawning the guys, shawning, 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 and then, <laughs> and now here you are. The guys can't come to you again; they're afraid. Now you want them to come, and they are not coming. You can't say that it is all about where you are coming from, or the Kambu people, or the home you. Somehow, also your 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 contribution to where you are, and so perhaps would want to start chatting some other parts, the way you are doing things perhaps should change. You see, mm -hmm. this philosophy tries to place a lot of responsibility, moral responsibility, and even economic and metaphysical responsibility on the human person. So there is some humanism underlying it, which is not always uh, pleasant to a lot of people. It makes it you, you, the self, bo, 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 you know, yes, we can, we, it is us. So that the extension to uh, an external force is limited, sometimes almost to the point of what, taking it out totally and saying that it is you. Stop pointing to someone. Oh, if it wasn't this person, what have you done about it? Oh, if the government, what about you? And right now it is, what about you? You see that, that is, that is what it is pointing. So there's a part that the human person plays in defining what we call the history of man. If you had so many abortions, sister, and then now, God forbid, oh, some have so many, and they still have so many, even in when they want the child now, they still get it because maybe they had enough in there. But perhaps you had only four and you did three. Then the last one that you were going to, you had a problem and it wasn't an abortion, but that one went. Now you can't say that you didn't have a hand in where you are. So our history includes what is given, which we have no you know, contribution to, plus what we chose. I'm trying to pull out to take after I take all your comments. Okay, then we'll look at the paper and highlight them. The, the, the document I sent you is my personal one that I used to teach. So you see that I have underlined portions. I have highlighted places. places. I even have comments there that can guide you reading to help you understand it, that three-page paper. Okay. All right, thank you, sir. There was someone else I mentioned. Please go ahead. I think it was um, Joseph. If you are done, could you put your hand down? Then I can take Rita Blue now. Good morning, Rita. Go ahead. Hikma, keep your things muted, please, until I ask you to. Okay, keep muted. There are eight hands. Let's take all of them. So I'll take Rita first, and then we can always come back to us. Go ahead, Rita. Doc, in some situations where blocks your future, like something like a criminal that committed a high offense and is getting you know death penalty. That one yeah. 
Yes, I got up to death penalty. So the criminal has committed a crime and is getting a death penalty. Please, could you continue from there? In such a situation, I don't think there's any option that he can take to you know, change his future or anything since he's already been sued from the decision from his family. Okay, you would realize that even at that time, the, the, the criminal could ask for opportunity to apologize to the persons he had. Sometimes they ask, please get me someone to pray for me before I go and take my death sentence. In fact, the whole thing about death sentences itself an ethical issue that you can engage in Asia, for example, or a life, life a, a sentence to death, where we take your life from, are all ethical issues that have, are being discussed. And for, for some reason, we don't even do it now. I don't know any society that endorses that. You can be sentenced to death and you'll still be in the prison there for some time. Sometimes you even qualify for a presidential pardon and stuff like that. Because the nature of life, the philosophical question of life, what is life? If you didn't give it, can you take it? What justifies the taking of any human life at all, regardless? Okay, so that is already in contention. And so people who have been sentenced, like you're saying, I mean, the, when they sentence you, they don't take you from the prison that immediately to even go and, and do whatever, uh, kill you, ele electrocute you, or poison you, make you drink a hemlock or something like that. No, they give you time. There's a reason for that. So that at that time, people can choose, I want to make a recording to tell the world that this kind of life can lead you here. The person is still making a choice for the supposed afterlife. Maybe your point is then it's missing this life. The person cannot do anything. Yes. That is why Otega is saying, if you have the ability to make choices, make them. In fact, that person who has been sentenced to death at that time can just say, I am not, I am not supposed to be sentenced to death. I want an appeal. He can even choke himself to the old, hold his own throat and die is an option. Or he can ask for pardon, or he can keep appealing. Limited choices, that is what perhaps Rita is trying to put across, yes. And so I use that example too. In that regard, Rita has a point that sometimes the options are not options at all. They are available, but they are not choosable, <laughs> so to speak. I jokingly told the city campus folks yesterday that, look, you people are close to Kempiski here. Is an option for lunch. Why are you not going to Kambiski? It's one of the given options. Otega says, feel free. Life has given you plenty options there. Why are you in a queue to go and buy plantain, a friend say, fried yam and something at the corner here? When there's Kambiski, there's a, give me the places, you know, all those places are there. They are options, but they are not accessible options. So that is what I think which I view's point will be that sometimes it looks like we have options, but they are not. See, the person is born with a certain handicap. And apologies to my special students. You see, but sometimes the person is so handicapped. Me, I, I am very much impressed when I see the, the, the special students we have on campus. They are very active. I've had a number of them, more than 50, since, since we, we, we started running the program, more than 50 for all levels. I get them, I get students like that. Some can reference you, I mean, they can mention your name even from a distance. When it was three years ago that you had a class with them, they can tell, you know, visual impairment, I mean, but can tell just by your name, your voice from a distance, hey, doc, hey, doc, I'm happy to see you. And I say, hey, so you can make me out. I don't want to mention any of them, but they know. You know, so they are special students and I appreciate them for that. But you can imagine if it is because of mommy's infidelity, mommy is trying to abort a child, for example, then it didn't work out well. And so the child had to struggle out. And when she, the child lost, see the eyes or something like that, it's not always that we have that scenario. But think about it. Mommy's choices are now going to define uh, the, the, the born child. 
Imagine this child is not only having such impairment, but maybe he's also uh, physically impaired. And then also he has a certain blood condition, a uh, sickle cell or something. So I'm, I'm trying to give you the wildest of your imagination. So she's a good swimmer, but the condition that she's given, see, this is given. She didn't choose it. She's born with that condition. She can't do what she loves to do, swim. Swimming could have taken her international but she, she's unable to do that. So the options are there. As if oh, you can choose to do this. If you think book is not good, then do your swimming. If you think this is not good, then do your, well, all those options are there, but the person is unable to. And I think that is the strength of Richard Bill's critique, which is what you should remember. So you can write it down somewhere. We said it in the video, we said it in the various classes we've gone to. One critique you can raise against Otega is that perhaps he doesn't realize how much the past baggage, the baggage from the past can restrict you know, our choices. He accepts that it is the past that limits you. But I think he, he talks as if the limit is not that much. There will still be various options available to you. And Rita Brew is echoing that in saying that sometimes the choices are there, but, but they are not meaningful choices after all. Okay. So I sum that uh, response up by saying that, imagine I give you an exam question, then I say it. the questions are six in all essays. Then I say, but answer question one, three, and five. <laughs> Have I given you options? Yes. But look at the instruction to the, the exam. It says, there are six options but answer question one, three, and five. That is almost like the, the, it's not meaningfully an option that has been given to you. And so sometimes our life presents us with such a scenario. Thank you very much, Rita. Let me take Abel Larry now. When Abel finishes, we will take Emmanuel Saki. Is it Emmanuel or Emmanuela? We'll take Emmanuel Saki, yes. Abel, go ahead. Well done, well done. I think you've read. Hello, good morning. Good morning, sir. If you could speak just a little bit louder. Good morning. Yes, yes, it's clearer now. Go ahead. This one is very tight. The last question that I need is what we found. So, um, we can define the extra natural part to be project of life specific. Yes, what you become by your choices. So it's not ref referring to any spiritual thing or non-physical thing. Yes. So like today I'm a lecturer. If I make choices, I improve upon my life. I could become president and I could become United Nations. You know, it could be positive or negative. But those those are what he, so that's what will define you by if you like. Not not uh, an essence that is prior to your existence. It's a take. Would I be wrong to say that um, this definition of extra natural part includes hands, radio, and ability to make choices, as well as what we call the dialectical series of I'm so sorry, I can't hear some of what you are saying, but I heard that you said, could you be wrong in saying that then the extra natural part is actually your ability to make choices? What we call the dialectical series of experience. So they come under this task. Okay, so because you, I, I'm not getting everything, but let me just respond in this way. Perhaps it can capture the concern you have. That because you, a human being, are able to influence what you are now, Ortega says, so you are not like the stone. So you have a part of you that is able to change what you are now, which the stone doesn't have. That is why he calls that one an extra natural part. So it is that part of you that is able to redefine the same you. That part of you is able to redefine you. So you are this, the next minute you become something else, the next minute you become something else. How does that happen? By the choices you are able to make. And how 
And how are you able to make those choices? You're able to make those choices because you have the capacity to, you have a part of you that can allow that. That's the extra natural part. All right. Can I take Emmanuel Saki now? Unless Abel is not done yet, then Abel, go ahead, please. No, please don't go ahead. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Let's take Emmanuel now. Go ahead, Emmanuel. Then we are ready to go into your text. We read it together. Go ahead, Emmanuel, please. Good morning, Madam. Good morning, sir. Madam, please. Um, Otega believes that man has no nature. He argues yes. rather that it is things that have nature. So I want yes. to know, apart from school, what are some of the things that have nature? Oh, every, every from a stone, chair, I think I mentioned a few, book. I mean, things that don't contribute to their being, they're just what they are. They won't be anything other than a book, you see. So if you like talk about uh, any other thing apart from man, that's why he says man is unique. I think I have my... This thing now, I have the the PDF now. I'll pull it out shortly, and then we'll go through it. It says man is unique amongst the, the entities that are in, in nature. It means every other thing will be natural, nature, natural. But man is not just natural, but has what an extra natural part also to it. So that is how I respond. Your table, your car, your book, uh, what the houses. If buildings could talk, look at the. <laughs> okay, it's okay. I think I've made a point. Okay, so that's how you answer it. I was going to talk about the washroom and the seats there, if they could talk. <laughs> the things they will say. <laughs> anyway, Emmanuel, do you have another question or you are sorted? And we can move on. I'm, I'm okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you to say. Let's take Beta. Uh, Beta Imbamon. I hope I pronounced your name. After that, I'll take Zakia and then we'll come back to Hikma. So, Beta, go ahead. Madam, 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 yes, madam, better. Go ahead. Please, looking at Otega view, looking at Otega view of nature, can we say the beginning of someone's life not become the end of the person's life? Exactly, my dear, better. Exactly. Everyone has hope. Don't ever write someone of that in this world. So if they are human beings, bad, yeah, don't write them off. If it's a stone, well, then it will just be a stone. Nothing can change. But I tell you, human beings, don't run. They're especially my sisters. When the brother comes with a chalewati, chill, <laughs> give time. <laughs> you will brothers too, you don't come with a chalewati. Sometimes we don't like the chalewati. But I'm telling you, don't give up. Especially when the priorities are set right. Because people can become, I mean, someone has sold bread. I was telling that that she said, has sold bread and he's gone international. He has bread everywhere. CNN is carrying his bread. Ghanaian bread. You see that? So just because a guy, a yogurt guy comes, yogurt, yogurt, and people, maybe, maybe he's making choices. Maybe when he raises money, he uses it to start a farm or something. Before long, he's running you know, a conglomerate of farm products. He's a poultry farmer, he's a, he's a if I can a friend, he's a those who keep coastal owner, you know, he's employing a lot of people. For you and I, who will finish our four, four years and go and look for a job, go and apply and join the queue. You see that? So the, the idea, there's a certain thing, and remember we are addressing our thoughts. Philosophy is dealing with the principles, the beliefs, the doctrines, the assumptions that people hold, you see. It's, most of them are so entrenched that when they are when we are doing things, you don't even ask questions of it. That is why we are getting ourselves introduced. Could it be that what we think is real isn't real after all? That's what we did with Plato. Now, could it be we are doing a uh, man's nature? Could it be that we have wrong principles, perhaps, that guide the way we do things? So the person comes and you. You look at them and you assume that oh, they will go see she, they can don't contribute anything to him. Let's give attention to the brother who is going to school. He knows calculus, so he know he will baby. He will succeed. Perhaps this one doesn't know calculus, but this autopsia that he's pulling, you just have to guide him, help him make the right choices because maybe just a total pa 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 before you know it has bought a house because he want he's playing football. Okay, 
We are not saying people should go and do bad things and get to because there's ethics. We are going to do with the question of right and wrong, which is ethics in due course. I think that's our next topic. But no one can be written off. That's the part that I wanted to enter your spirit, if there is anything like that. And I believe there is. Okay? Nothing. There is no one. So far as the person is a human being, that has no hope. That is what Ortega's paper shows me. The ones that I don't agree with, I can critique him for it. But that is what it tells me. Man is able to make choice. So look around you and say, okay, what can I do about this? It is COVID that has come. But people are looking for charcoal to buy now. Our friend at the place there, I don't want to mention his name now. <laughs> we heard that he has pulled the plug. He's not going to give gas to you. They're looking for charcoal. What are we doing in Ghana? Me my Ghana. Amma. <laughs> okay. Beta, thank you for your, for yeah. your, yeah. your submission. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll take Zakia now. And after Zakia, we can take Hikma and come to Collins and Nathaniel. Go ahead, uh, Zakia. I'm proud of the class. Eh? You did well. I thought you had not read. But, but the feedback tells me that you have done some reading. Please go ahead, Zakia. Okay, if Zakia is not with us now, we can take Collins. Please, Collins, Collins or Bing. No, Zakia is, is back. Hello, madam. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Please, I want to ask you a question. Because I don't know if... Um, because I'm thinking if talent then why is it that some can't carry it? And besides, there are same things that people will go for to tell the skills and better than those who between our talent. Okay, so I think that we, well, I think that we shouldn't confuse talent with skill. Okay, so, uh -huh. so some people are naturally talented with braiding of hair. They have that talent. Even before anyone taught them how to do anything, they could braid hair she just touches your hair she, as if she's playing with it and before you know she has put some nice design there some are good at art artwork drawing you can be talking with you before you know they have drawn your face on your thing there. it's a natural talent then talent can be skilled you can polish it okay so some learn some learn the skill like even uh, academic work some don't have the talent of learning too <laughs> they don't have it some to do that's why you must see yourself, man, know thyself. When your friends are jumping around and say, oh, this goes there, oh, this one, uh, maybe I'll learn it this day. Look at yourself. Maybe you need a lot of time to engage that kind of content. You know, some people are analytic. They are analysis inclined. So if you are presenting anything that doesn't follow logically, they can't grasp it because they have a certain posture. And they are already questioning what you are giving them. They have that posture. Others too are relatively gullible, quote and unquote. They will swallow everything you bring, but when they go, then they go and reflect and throw some out. So the point I'm making is if it is a skill, you develop it, you polish. So the talent may be there, but it needs polishing for it to reach where others have it. Then others too, they don't have the talent, but they learn and then they polish. So either way, some are given, some are not given, but there is nobody that wasn't given anything. Everybody has something, naturally. You're a human being. You have, excuse me, you have parents. You come from a place. You are groomed. Before you start making choices, you would already have received so much. It is important, the kind of background you have, yes. But even where you have a background that is not too pleasant, you are giving stuff that wasn't too pleasant, your choices matter. Some people didn't have a good starting point. They want others to suffer like they did. <laughs> we'll do ethics so that you, you raise questions with that. Okay. But others too, if they look at how they suffered. When I was a student, we were thousand something. You know, Central cafeteria, when we are coming for lecture, everybody looks for chair. Some even pay for chair. If your friend is at Saba Hall, main hall there, then it means they can walk five minutes, they'll be at the lecture. So you tell them, please, when you come, I'm, I'm booking for seat. Some will bring plastic chairs from home. Those who are that abuse, they'll have it. Even you bring the plastic chair, there is no place to put it to set up. 
Is that what you are going through? No, <laughs> you see that. So when you have a past, it doesn't mean others should also have the same. I finished with uh, my sister, my sister's question. I'm just adding something else that when you see that this didn't go well, then you can choose that. I had this kind of background, but I don't want another to have. So everybody will have a background, a talent, a skill, a place, you know. Some have head, some have creativity, some have both. Some were born with a golden spoon, spoon in their hand. They will never taste poverty. You can't do anything about it. <laughs> Others do, no matter what they do, poverty is following them. Before you go and say it's spiritual, which I acknowledge it could be, Think about what you can do about it. Ghana is still crying. Okay, not Ghana alone. Most African countries are still crying. Slave trade. The people came to colonize us. Colonize you. It's true. I write papers in that line. But how long will you play on that? <laughs> the colonization can't be uncolonized. We can go back to 1901 and go and change the time. Yeah. What you do ahead is what is important. Okay. Anyway, I added more to my sister. So yes, my sister, some are talented. It's, it's what is given naturally. And others are skilled. They, they work on that talent and develop their skill. In fact, people even want to emphasize skill than talent. Because if you don't polish up your talent, people will use skill to take over. Just like we have natural resources, nature giving resources, but people will go and change our gold into bracelets and rings, and they come and sell it back to us. Yeah. Oh, they have cocoa, which is naturally given, you see that. And before they process it and bring it back, you are buying that same product, chocolate or something, at a very exorbitant price, because skill can beat talent, what is given naturally. That's how I react to it. OK, thank you very much. Let me take a Hickman now, and then I'll go to Collins and Natalia. Well done. Good morning, madam. Good morning, my lady. Madam, please, there is this quote of Ortega that I just stumbled upon, and it says okay. that I, myself and my circumstance, if I do not say it, I do not say Is this quote not um, kind of restricting ourselves from... Please, so I didn't hear the quote. Coming out just from most circumstances. Sorry? I didn't hear the quote. Uh, please, I didn't hear the quote, the quotation. If you could come again. Okay. Okay, is it in the text? Is it in the text I gave you? I don't know, but I just so okay. I want you to be careful. Of, okay, you let's let's hear you, but before we attribute things to people, we want to be careful if the person said it. Uh -huh. yes. But don't worry, you let's say let's assume that he, he said it. We can interrogate it later. You. Okay. So the quote is, and myself, if I do not save it, I do not save myself. And I am saying that it's not kind of like binding us to our second chance. Is it not? I am a bit wary. Like yes, I, I would understand your critique, but I'm not sure if I can attribute that to Otega yet. In okay. the context in which he was speaking. Uh -huh. So we can reflect on that one later together. Okay. Let's that is if we suppose that he said it, then we can critique him. We want to be careful not to hit a straw man if the person hasn't said that or someone has taken him out of contest and is using him to make a case somewhere. Uh -huh. Why? Okay. Thank you so much. Let's take uh, Collins now. Collins, go ahead. Hello, Madam. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, Madam, my question is, um, 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 we are, um, we are restricted. Madam, we are, um, our choices are restricted when, um, we have a bad issue. For example, um, um, an ex-convict cannot be a president. Or, yes. Um, someone who has a bad issue cannot be a king or a chief. So I'm saying, yes. uh. Uh, uh, he tends out to work out, tends out to work against us. But yes, do like they do. They limit us. Yes, Otega okay. agrees. In fact, he tells okay. you that's why the 
Oh, sorry. I thought you were done. Otega will agree with you. That's why he tells you to be mindful of the choices you are making. Otherwise, then you can you can steal and you know kill and things. Okay, but he tells you that before long, if you break your virginity, that's the example I gave earlier. Okay, you can't say that oh now I've changed my mind. I want to live a good life, so I'm going to become another virgin. It can't happen. Your past. Uh -huh. So the the past tells us what mm -hmm. you cannot be, says Ortega. I'll show you shortly. Oh, okay. Your past tells us oh. that you cannot be something. I mean, I always use that example myself. I tell my student that, oh. how can I come and tell you now that I'm a virgin? <laughs> eh? Amara, this woman I, 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 who is a mother of four, a married sister, eh? <laughs> you can. So Ortega says your past can help us know what you cannot be. But as for what you can be, we cannot. Mm. Okay. All right. Okay. What is Mamara, you were like, we can make, we can make choices to improve upon our history. That was what I, yes. wanted, I wanted you to emphasize on. Yes, please, you can. So the uncle that took your your properties, property, or, or let's use academia. Okay, so the result, I mean, the person got an F in a certain course. That's the past. Yeah. He cannot undo the F that has been done. But he can... Yeah. Take the course again and get an A. I, I don't know if that, that is simple. Yeah. So that he can graduate and move on. Uh -huh. So that's what Otega is saying. Now, rather than crying, say, ah, this F that I got, oh, this F, oh, this F. The F is on your transcript. It hasn't left. We don't want that for any of you in this course. Amen. 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 But I'm saying that, so that that person that has had that F and is brooding over it and brooding over it and we are sitting there doing nothing. That is the problem. That one, the person is behaving like the stone. The sun will shine on that stone on the field, rain will fall on it, human beings are passing, they will hit their legs at it. He's still sitting there, not moving, not doing anything about it. You see, that is what Otega says human beings are like that. We shouldn't behave like that. Okay. I don't know if thank that's you are welcome. Um, thank you. So, now I can take a uh, Thank you, Collins. I can take um, Nathaniel. I still see new hands up now. Hikma, if you could put your hand down now. So I take Nathaniel, then I take Jessica afterwards. Go ahead, Nathaniel. Nathaniel, you are muted. So if you could unmute first. If not, then we'll take Jessica Dongo and then we'll come to Ayodele. Let's go ahead. I think Nathaniel is off a little. So let's take Jessica Dongo and then we can come to you, Dili. Good morning, madam. Good morning, ma'am. Go ahead. Um, I really don't have a question on it. I want to understand something. Yes, please. Um, go ahead. In, in writing your essay, could you um, say that Ortega uses the stone to symbolize his form of nature, like the form of nature. And he uses what? That, he uses what? The stone. The stone. The stone. The stone. stone. The stone. Yes, 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 please. Yes. Right. Stone to symbolize nature in general. Yes. So if you say nature, you want to be careful. You see, hmm, it's because it's philosophy. You want to be careful because human beings also have a natural part, they have nature part in us. Okay. So you can say, oh, uh -huh. Otega uses the stone to represent things. He calls them things. And he says human beings are not things. Yeah, what a we thing. have a will. And a exactly. We can even go on and on and on and on. But that his focus is really on human beings. Maybe someone can say, and it looks like he can even have a small place also for animals because animals take care of their young, you know like the bed will build a nest and stuff like that. Well, he's not even focusing on animals. He's worried, or his paper seems to say that don't treat human beings as if they are tense. Human beings have a say in how they become. So you yourself, the human being, you should have that consciousness. Don't sit and say, well, I don't know what I, I don't know. I don't know that I had no other option than to. He says, no, 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 don't say that. You can, you can have a, a, a change. That is initiated by you, not someone. Okay. Um, but, but Madam, 
um, yes. you see the part of Tegas Jason where he said um, um, some part of both the meal of both is found at the shore and the other part is found in, uh, what is it, in the yes, water. Yes, on the sand, yes. Water and then the sand, yes. Partly in, partly out, yes. Did you interpret that as man has power over something in his life? Was this to show? The That's what I've, I've projected now. I'm highlighting that please here. He says Dante would have likened him to a boat drawn up on the beach. If you could see my screen, uh -huh. drawn up on the beach with one end of its keel in the water and the other in the sand. So he's trying to give a pictorial representation of what he has in mind when he says man. He's showing you that man is partly inside the water, nature, partly outside of it, like the boat, partly inside the water, partly. Out. Then he also uses the center to show the same thing, partly human, partly animal. In other words, partly nature. Okay. All right. You. Thank you, madam. Then, you, you are welcome, my lady. Let's take, Nathaniel is still not back, so are you delay? And then Elizabeth is back again. And after that, I think we'll just walk through the slides and the PDF as well. That will be good. Ayodele, go ahead. Thank you, madam. Um, please, about the opportunity aspect. Yes, please. Um, Ortega uh, made us understand that sometimes we, um, when there are no opportunities, we have to create our own opportunities. In fact, he will tell you that there are always are opportunities. <laughs> That's what he means. We are going to go through the, the text again. Not the whole thing, I'll just point them out to you. That there's okay. always, uh -huh, that's what he says. There's all, in fact, our confusion, he says, is which one to choose. And mm -hmm. that is determined by uh -huh, where we want to get to. You see, if you had, if you didn't have too many clothing for Sunday, then you will not struggle to know what you are wearing on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. The challenge is there's so much. So, should I do the red with the cap? Oh, okay, should I do foot or this? That's the, that's the problem. Says or take, mm -hmm. but as for the opportunities, they are there. <laughs> so okay. we'll go through the things and then I'll show you. Okay. Thank you, you very much. Thank you, too. Let's take Elizabeth now, then we are done. Mrs. Dakwa, go ahead. Okay, so please, uh, with the biggest speaker, he said that yeah. uh, freedom indicates a lack of flexibility, but it's an obligation. So my question is, how then do you start the Give me to choose freedom, or why must we choose what to do? Excellent. So that also brings us. Yes, I don't even want you to go forward. That also brings us to the second critique you can raise against Ortega, I think, which I've given to all the classes. So it's only fair that we touch on it here again, and it is also in the video. The, the critique is from his own presentation and his own argument. It suggests to us that something is essential, after all, uh, to the being of man. There is something that seems to be fixed and unchanging to man's being. That this is what he has been denying all this while. Okay, so we love the, the philosophy, we love you know, its usefulness and value, but we realize that what he sought to do, which is to deny that there is any fixed unchanging reality called essence called nature that's what he sought to do he has rather given us that same thing in man by his own argument so we are using his argument to show him that he just pointed us to one thing that is fixed unchanging and what seemingly preordained because every human being has it by his own argument that thing is what the freedom to choose Every man, by his own, in fact, he states it in his text. Let's go to the text now. He says that man is compulsorily free. Please, can everyone see my, my PDF, not the slide? I have changed it to the PDF itself, the, the paper itself. If I could guess a reaction, so I know yes. you are seeing it. Uh -huh. Thank you. So yes, on the screen now, yes, thank you very much. On the screen now, I, I, let me go forward quickly to where he tells us. I'm projecting the second point, that among these possibilities, I'm reading uh, something on the screen, too, that among these possibilities, I must choose. Hence, I am free. But be it well understood, I am free by compulsion. 
says to Tega, <laughs> I'm free by force. Man is free to choose by force. In other words, man cannot choose not to be free. That is how man's being is. We are free beings, says Otega. So the freedom of choice becomes a definitive feature of man. But he, he already denied that we had any such. But by the time he finished arguing, he himself has produced that as what? The essence of man. And so we can critique Otega, I think, successfully by saying that the very thing he set up to deny in man, which is what? That we have no nature. He ended up arguing to show that man is defined essentially by what? The freedom of choose or the capacity of freedom, the capacity of freedom, free will, that man is freely able to choose. Remember, you can also write it down, just like the first critique we raised, that he seems to not realize that the impact of the past on the future is very high. It's not just limiting us, but sometimes it takes away the options that we think we have. The options are there, but we are unable to assess them. They are not meaningful options. I can't go to Kempiski, not because I don't know that there's Kempiski there where there's good food and a good environment and all. Maybe it's because my pocket money is 30 cities for the semester, 3 0. <laughs> so if you talk Kempiski for break, that breakfast at Kempiski, you see that. Uh -huh. So I know it is there, I know it's an option, but it's not take up, it's not an option to be taken. So that's the first critique we raised against Ortega, that perhaps the impact of the past has not been measured. Well. It has, it can have dire effect on the future, so much so that perhaps it might make our options, uh, you know, uh, dissipate, disappear. Then the second one, which Madame helped us see again, is what? That he has rather given us a definitive, you know, feature for human beings, something that defines our essence. That is what he's denying. He doesn't want to talk soul and spirit and what have you, but by the time he finished, what he has proposed is not soul and spirit, which is essentially defining us, but he's saying that a human being then is essentially a free being, a being that chooses. And he says, look, this choice is not something you decide to. You are free by compulsion. It's still on the screen, point two. Whether I wish to be or not. Because what? Write it down. Choosing not to choose is itself a choice. Choosing not to choose is a choice. So even if you didn't choose, you have chosen not to choose. It's a choice. That is the point that makes Otega uh, quite intriguing. We, we think that there we have seen uh, one thing that is what essential to man's being. Thank you so much. I will delay. Now I want someone to read for me. I'll take, uh, I see all this, all, everyone whose hand is up now has spoken. So I'll take all your queries again if there are any, but I want one of you to read the Otega PDF on the screen. Just unmute and read, please. If you have a good background. Go ahead. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Existence, it needs not fight for what it is. A stone in the field, man has to be himself in spite of unfavorable circumstances. That means he has to make his own existence at every single moment. He is given the abstract possibility of existing, but not the reality. This he has to conquer hour after hour. Man must earn his life not only economically but metaphysically and all excellent. Things... hold on for a minute excellent so you can now see i'm, I'm sure that now that our sister reads it everything now makes so much meaning to you okay and and this is his heartbeat and see how he's writing that's how you should write philosophically from the onset he sets out to clarify what he's going to do he tells you the stone has its nature its existence. Human beings don't. Okay? And then he continues to show you the stone cannot be anything other than what it is. 
But as for human beings, even in spite of unfavorable circumstances, when the tide doesn't favor you at all, you have to make your own existence every single moment. See that? Every single moment, hour by hour, minute by minute, you are the one writing your own novel about yourself. And then he goes on to say, you must earn it. It is earned. <laughs> your being is earned. And means you work for it. You did it. You contributed to it. Didn't just come. Okay. And he's not talking only economically, where we say, oh, a brand new but life is how we make it. So you have to work hard to become somebody in future. That's economic. He's saying that even your being who you are, if, you see, don't let someone turn you into a bitter woman or, or, a, or a, what? a weak man by the way they are, they are creating you. You don't allow it. You have been hurt, but let it go <laughs> and create your being. Be a pleasant person. It is your being. It's not even money, economics. Okay? You can get so angry from home and then you bring it to the office. And now your folks have a problem with you in the office. They think that woman, she's this, that man, she's this. You call some, says Otega. You must earn your being by the choices you make. Okay, thank you, my lady. Thank you. You may want to read. The second one is quite lengthy, but it has some. Okay, let me just do some pointings here. So those who may not have seen the text before, see, I said man is not like natural things. Man is partly natural, partly extra natural. So this is center. This is uh, the, the boat scenario they are all here. Then he tells you that our extra natural, I'm pointing, please. I want to help you see it. So our extra natural and anti-natural portion must not be interpreted in terms of any of the older spiritual philosophies. I am not interested now in the so-called spirit, that's Geist. Look at how he described that, a pretty confused idea <laughs> laden with speculative wizardry. So he's not talking spirit, so non-physical, no. For you to get it clear, before you go and misread him, he's telling you, okay? Then the third paragraph, he says, if the reader reflects a little upon the meaning of the entity he calls his life, he will find that it is the attempt to carry out a definite program or project of existence. That is what life is. Yesterday, we buried one of our very, no, not buried, we heard of the passing of uh, one of the fine high life musicians of Ghana. His life has ended. <laughs> so to speak, this life, of course, but I believe there are other lives beyond that. Okay. And his self, each man's self, not our collective self, each man, one, one, be careful when your colleagues say, oh, this one, we can do, they will let us go. Master. We have the collectivity, you learn that communality, but there is an individuality too. Like I've told you, we, are, we aren't all the same. There are people, they don't need to revise what we are discussing now. After this discussion, it's stuck. They don't need to come back to it. When you bring the question six years from today, they can reproduce what they are hearing. Others too. God in his own wisdom made them such that they have to do a little brush up. Some too is not a brushing up. They have to talk and talk and talk. So they need discussion. That's why there are different modes of assessment and different modes of engagement for you. That's why I've sent a recorded session when I see that the topic is engaging, that's why we interact. That's why the, all those, so that we meet different needs. You cannot expect that you'll be like your friend or your friend will be like you. Each man, he says, one, one. It's nothing but this device program. So you, you are a program that you are making, you yourself, you are, you are making, you are the project. Nancy, I'm a project. Who is the master of that project? Myself. Whilst you are a project, you are a master of that project yourself. Okay, all right. All we do in the service of all we do in the service of this program. Thus, man begins by being something that has no reality, neither corporal nor spiritual. He is a project as such, something which is not yet, but aspires to be. That is why there's a question I asked. Man's being does not consist in what is but it consists rather in what, what is not yet. I don't know what you will be, my people. I speak good things alone on, on, onto your lives. Eh? 
But I tell you, the people that we are sitting with in class, they are the same people who one day will be the president and the United Nations and the entrepreneur, look at the despite of Ghana, whom we all know. We are selling cassettes, we are told, <laughs> you know. But from the story we hear, that is what we hear. It is through this cassette, Gakan, uh, Ghana has stations, TV stations, and it's employing hundreds and hundreds of people. Okay, so that is what we hear, and we can only work with what we we, take, we have been told. We can't conjure any other version of it. The point I'm making is, so you can never know what someone will be. So man's life consists in what, not what is. What is is what is there already. That is what you know. But what the person can be, because it's a project in the making, ongoing, not ended. Okay, one may object that there can be no program without some somebody having it, without an idea, blah, blah. He says the person, the financier, and everything is you yourself. <laughs> in fact, I find no difficulty in thinking this idea, but I'm, I'm okay. Then we go to the next paragraph. Uh, everything else in this world, okay, so I, I want someone to read this. Some of the expressions are King James, don't worry. I'll help you read it. And the part that I want the student to hear it, I'll let a student read it. Okay, so. I'm reading this and someone read from everything. The beginning is here we come upon the formidable and unparalleled character, which makes man unique. I've asked a question on this. I don't know if I'll change it, okay? Something that makes man unique in the universe. We are dealing with an entity whose being consists not in what it is already, but in what it is not yet. That is what makes man unique. Man is not something we need to done, deal, that's it. No, man is something that is not yet all the time. A being that consists in not yet being. Now you understand. I let you read from everything. Everything else in, the, in this world, <laughs> what it is, an entity whose mode of being consists in what it is already whose potentiality coincides at once with his reality. We call a thing. Things are given their being ready-made. Excellent. Now, man is the opposite of this. Man is unique in this regard. So if I asked you, using practical illustrations and examples from law, medicine, you know, culture, stuff like that, show Otega's argument that Man is unique in this universe because his being consists in not yet being stuff like that. You can write and write plenty. So sometimes I have to restrict people. Okay. Now on the second page, you see at every moment of my life, there open before me are what diverse possibilities. Mm -hmm. I said all this. I can do this or that. For instance, then he gives you an example. This book you are reading, you can decide to continue reading so that you become a or you can stop and become B. That's what is going on here. Man is the entity that makes itself. And I'm saying that this is where if you are very religious inclined, religion in the positive way, if you're a church person or something, you get wary of this, I make myself, I'm self-made. It's not a good language for the, the one who knows that we have our ultimate source uh, beyond us, okay? But if you just see that he's doing academia, academic work, and so he wants to cut off anything that will raise entanglement. If someone is not a church person and they say something else, you say, oh, me, I don't believe that they say they got someone, okay? But apart from that, look at this. Man is the entity that makes itself. Yes, I say you can choose to become a better teacher. I'm telling you, you choose it. You can choose to be angry. And you can also choose not to get yourself angry. Well, the broken heart has come. What will you do? Okay, it's paining me, but what will I do? Will you go and look at pictures? of the guy and the lady in a wedding. Hey, you are going to hurt yourself more. Mm -hmm. ah, you decide, okay, going forward, then I have to really study hard and become a big person, then blah, 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 so that the brother, when he sees me, you see that he lost something. And you don't keep pain in your heart. Every day, your skin will be fresh. All children are so cute, you see that. But you two are so angry at the person, every day you are looking for how to poison him spiritually and all that, you will be stressed out. Okay, you choose to, you make yourself, both economically and also what metaphysically, metaphysics, metaphysics is what you're being. 
not just what you have economically, which you have attained the status or whatever, but what you are as your being is so important to Ortega. Okay, so here you see the causacy and all those. Don't worry yourself much over. We are not doing existentialism proper. Okay, then we go and we're almost done. But man must not only make himself, the weightiest thing he has to do is to determine what he is going to be. I said, you don't know what you are going to be at. How do you even make the choices? So the, the difficult thing is determining where you want to be. That is what will influence your choosing, whether you use the 300 CDs to do some designer hair or you buy some books and cut your hair or something like that for the time and the season. It's based on what you see yourself being ahead of you. Okay, that's Otega's point. If the reader has resolved not to go on reading, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now concerning these possibilities of being the of being the following remarks fall to be made. He has to make this one, that the opportunities, these possibilities of being are not presented to me. I must find them for myself. I'm a Ghana. <laughs> my student friends, you have to find them. My unemployed graduate student, you have to find the job. Find it. Find it here means what? Create it. So Tom Brown be here, they package it. Mm, because we eat every day. We eat every day. We even import food. So it will never go waste. We are all looking for shirts, white shirts with black tie. That's the problem. You have to find opportunity. Process things. Grow food. Ma marine science, my brother said. Oh, then get some seamen and get some boats going. I'm telling you. People will call it fisher, fisherman or fisherwoman. Now, they are better off than you and I sometimes. I'm telling you. Have you seen a fisherman who is hungry? <laughs> okay. So you have to find it. Find the opportunity. Says Otega. Either on my own or through the medium of those of my fellows with whom my life brings me in contact. You see? Does this look like <laughs> something that is not practical? He is a philosopher. God brings people your way. You meet people. Some are colleagues. So that's why you're going to do group work subsequently. So you have classmates. You can team up. When your uh, credit, uh, what's the name? Your student loan comes. You take 50 Ghana, 50 Ghana. If there are 20 of you, you can raise something. You start something. You make sure that it's well laid out. Not that you are going to finish four years and go and join a queue of those who are looking for a job. I say, whose job are you going to do? Whose? And who will pay you? All right. I invent projects of being and of doing in the light of circumstance. This alone I come upon. This alone is giving me. What is giving? Circumstance. It's as if we are church now. Time and chance happens to all. The seeing of the opportunity is the problem. People don't see it. It is too often forgotten that man is impossible without imagination. See that? Without the capacity to invent for himself a conception of life. See that? to ideate the character he's going to be. You see that? Whether he be original or a plagiarist is not a problem. We don't mind. Maybe you are copying what you see in someone and say, hey, I also want to do this. It's OK. Insofar as you are going to make choices to get there, man is the novelist of himself, unquote. All right. The second one I read is when I was answering Madame's question that we are free by compulsion. That's another point he's making. The only attribute of the fixed stable being, the free being, is this what constitutive instability, which is what? I am so free that I cannot choose not to be what? I'm free. In order to speak then of man's being, we must first elaborate and non blah, blah, blah. So we are going to look at, these are all existentialism proper. Don't worry your head. Man invents for himself a program of life. We said all that. And the last page. We have some few minutes left. You see that when you take, so you see, man goes on, I'm pointing, look at it. Man goes on being and on being. He goes on accumulating being, that is the past. He goes on making for himself a being through his dialectical series of exper experiments. Dialectics just means you have a thesis, an antithesis, it blends, creates a synthesis. So there is a present con condition, you you do something about it, you add something else, it creates a new condition. Then that new condition itself to becomes the new one you have. You apply something else, it creates a new one. So for example, you are currently a student. You study hard, 
you graduate, you become what, uh, maybe a lecturer. Okay, that's a new condition, a synthesis of you know, thesis and antithesis. Now as a lecturer, then you do well, you make some choices, you become a senior lecturer. You have, so now that synthesis has become the thesis, it meets an antithesis, it generates an life. So that is the process of life. Something affects what you have and creates a new thing. Then something else affects that new thing and creates a new thing. That's dialectics, simply put, okay? Now, Otega shows you that that is life, man's life. So you can't say that I have arrived. You be and on being. So man goes on being and on being. Now, daughter, before long, you're a mother. Before long, not just a mother, you're something else by the process of dialectics. Okay. What else should I add here? Okay. So he says, such a discovery is what will be called history. Now, the last paragraph. Here then, awaiting our study lies man's authentic being. See the being quote? So that you don't go and reference Plato's world of being. Stretching the whole length of his past. My friend, who asked that question? All your questions have been uh, uh, touched on the text. That's why I was very impressed. Man is what has happened to him. See? And what, what he has done. The two. I told your friend when he asked that question. Not just what has happened to him. But what he has done, they are all inside his past, which is his history. Other things might have happened to him or have been done by him. But what did in fact happen to him and was done by him? This constitutes a relentless trajectory of what? Experiences. It doesn't end. That he carries on his back as the vagabond carries what? His bundle of all he possesses. Man is a substantial emigrant on a pilgrimage of being. I said all that earlier. And he is accordingly meaning, and it is accordingly meaningless to set limits to what he is capable of being. You see that? Yes. And this initial illimitableness of possibilities that characterizes one who has no nature, there stands out only one fixed pre-established and given line by which he may chart his course. Only one limit. You see that he admits that the past limits you. That limit is what the past. But limit doesn't mean it has taken away all. But we are telling him that, oh, sometimes because of the limit, what is left is almost meaningless. We can't do Kempiski. But he says, well, don't do Kempiski. But soaking stew is food. If you can't do fried rice, soaking stew is food. Three cities are sorted. <laughs> Eat it with them. People will leave their job off and join it. You see here, that and it's okay. Say, hey, I mean. because of how you are eating it with inner conviction, because of the project you have ahead of you that you are trying to be. You are not concerned about what you are going through now. Okay, the experiments already made with life narrow man's future. Too many abortions can narrow the option of childbirth. Can it may not, but it could. Too many stealings, you, have, you are known in the papers for being a thief. Then later on, when you reach where you wanted to be, maybe a president, people would reference your past and it can go against you. You may not even get to president, like your friend said. If we do not know what he is going to be, we know what he is not going to be. So the person that has given birth to four children cannot say she's a virgin. You see that? That one, we are sure she cannot be a virgin again. But we know that one. The one that we don't know is what she can be. Man lives in view of the past. Okay. And so the famous quote that I always ask to them, man in a word has no nature. What he has is history. Expressed differently, if we say it differently, what nature is to things. Things have nature. History, res gesta, is what to man. It's an excellent thing. I love it. Any further questions? The slides there, you have them all over the place. Do we have any further questions? If we do, okay, so I see Asari Joshua. Sorry, go ahead. Please, if it's a question. Madam, please. Otega talks about man having only one limit or the past. Yes. Yeah. And the past, some can be good, and some can be bad. 
How can they yes. limit? Sometimes even your good past can be a limit because you haven't seen poverty before. You don't know how to make policies that meet poor people's needs because you are you are always eating custard. They carry you an air conditioning car to school. Then you went to your school throughout, and now all of a sudden, yeah, maybe a minister in charge of children and something. When they say, look. The traffic doesn't help. So can you say traffic? I don't understand that. I think what they need is a good computer. Computer, really, the people want food. Your good path has become a limit. So that's an example. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Thanks. You welcome. Erica, your hand shut up again. I'll I'll stop the video shortly, but I want to take those questions. Maybe your colleagues will benefit. So go ahead, Erica. Otherwise, I see Bright at B. He hasn't spoken today, so we can take Erica quickly and take Bright. Our time is up. Quickly, go ahead, Erica. Please, about the second critique. We are telling him that. Yes, we are telling him that he has he has given us an example of something that is fixed and unchanging in man, which is what man man is free, compulsorily free. So then that becomes the nature of man. Man is defined by freedom. But he, 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 he didn't set out to give us that. When he set out, he wanted to show us that man doesn't have a fixed, unchanging reality. There's nothing that is fixed in man. Please, do you understand? Do you Liz, understand? Still, Liz, it's still not very clear for me. Oh, you have to engage the content well then, OK. Because the man has set out to, to do something. He's trying to make a case that man doesn't have anything that is fixed and unchanging in him. Man doesn't have a nature, an essence. Okay, that's what he wants to show with the whole argument that he did. By the time he finished with the argument, he has rather showed us one thing that is compulsory, necessary to every man's being. That one thing is freedom. But every man is free to choose. Man, every man is free to choose, unlike the stone. Man freely chooses. Even if you don't choose anything at all, right? you have chosen not to choose. It's still a choice. So freedom to choose has become something that defines man's nature. So we are telling him that you didn't really succeed in convincing us that man has no nature. You only gave us another thing that defines man's nature. That thing is what? That man is free by force. Okay. Uh -huh. So play play on the videos again, and let's hope that they help you. Okay. Let me take Bright. Bright, go ahead. We are supposed to end at nine twenty to help those who are moving to other sessions. To go. If you have to attend another session, please you are allowed to leave. Okay. We'll, I'll just wrap it up nicely and send you the link as I always do for you to play back if you want to. Okay. Right, right, go ahead. I'll take some few questions and, and then I'm done. So if Bright is not ready, a point team, go ahead quickly. A point team. Everyone is muted, so you would have Hello. to unmute. Ah, okay, Bright Hello. is in. Hello. Go ahead, Bright. Go ahead, Hello. Bright. Yeah. Bright can be. Oh, we can so hear you. Know, go ahead. Yeah. How do I know that? Choosing or not choosing is already been choose. If you don't choose at all, you have chosen not to choose. Mm. <laughs> That's the answer. Hey. <laughs> I don't know if you get it. Uh -huh. That's it. It's, it's the philosophy, it's the logic of it. Even if you decide not to choose, you have chosen yeah, choose. not to choose. So choice is oh, compulsory oh. to be. Uh -huh. Okay. Right. Okay. Mm. People like Thank to you. sit on the fence. You are welcome. People like to say, "Me, I didn't choose anything." Well, not choosing means you chose not to choose, so it's not a choice. Oh, okay. Compulsion by force. He himself admits that. So if he admits that we are free by compulsion, then my dear friends, he just showed us <laughs> what defines the essence of man. It might not be the soul and the spirit and what have you, but it is freedom. And I'm telling you, if you go to the law court now, if someone is compelled to do some evil. Like you stick a knife to my a gun to me and say, "Come on, slap the woman." If you don't slap her, I'll, I'll shoot you. You have taken my freedom. That minute, I'm not a human being. That's why sometimes people can be, uh, you know, set free, even though they committed a crime. 
if they are able to establish that they were compelled, their freedom was taken. This is Otega. It means the person is no longer human. If they don't have the freedom to choose, they have become like an animal or a thing. So sometimes, if you're able to prove that, they let you go. Okay. All right. Quickly on our screens, I'm just walking through. I like to make sure all groups got everything. The slides are with you, but on this on this screen, you see that uh, everything there we have done. We have done everything there. Okay. Then the second, look at this one. Existence precedes essence. It's what uh, uh, Otega and his friends would say, whilst Plato and his folks would say, essence precedes existence. We have an essence even before we exist. That's Plato and his friends who are essentialists. They place emphasis on your essence. Okay. Otega and his friends would say, no, 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 it's the other way around. We exist first, then we create an essence for ourselves. So they would say, existence precedes essence. Okay, you know all that. That is it over there. Is it in there? His friends are Jean Possat, I mentioned that earlier, Heidegger and himself. They are all existentialist thinkers. Then everything I've said, look on the screen, you see that. Man is not like the stone, which is a thing. Man can alter whatever has been given to you by the past. You can alter it. Unlike the stone. They are partly natural, partly extra natural. It's not referring to spirit and stuff like that. We have said all that. It is that extra natural part that keeps changing and changing and changing, for which reason you don't have a fixed nature, he says. But we turn out to show him that then you have shown us that which is fixed in man. See the paragraphs that I showed you? I took you through them, so don't worry your head. Then we have also stressed that the questions at the end of the slides engage them in your discussions. See the one I mentioned about the homeless poor orphan. I even added who is contemplating suicide. This is past question. Those who like to reflect, see this one too. I could give you, I could ask you to give a response that challenges this view. Then I say use illustrations to make your point clearer. When I teach you all oh, can bear me out, I use a lot of practical scenarios. I want you to adapt that because it brings life to the philosophy, it makes it come alive. So you can see its relevance. Okay. And I will expect that of you when you are writing essays in the final exam. The uh, midsem do won't be like that. The midsem will be. Either short, short answers, multiple choice here and there, you come to Sakai and do it. By your final exam, you do assist. Okay. So learn how to adopt practical illustrations to make your point. Okay. How does Otega distinguish man's being from that of the stone? You know all this. What does Otega mean by extra natural part? We've done all that. Okay. Uh, what in why is man unique? See what I write there. Otega gives a person's nature is never fixed and stable, that the nobody of yesterday can become the CEO of today. In his words, man goes on being and on being. We've read all that. What in the being of man, according to Otega, accounts for this continuous dialectical self invention? Okay. Excellent. Have a wonderful, blessed week. I'm not sure we'll do, are we free or determined? I think we've done enough of the metaphysical questions, okay? So we will enter, this is definitely not the end of presentation seven. <laughs> this is the end of presentation four, okay? So we'll move on to what I have shared slides on, I've shared uh, readings on the question of ethics, and we'll do what we found, informed consent, medical ethics, okay? Thank you very much. I, st I still see three hands. Let me, let me end our recording. I will take the questions. I can afford to take those questions. Okay. Thank you very much and have a wonderful week. Thank you.